After months apart, will a mayor recognize the woman who saved her life? Find out in this episode of Barn Stories. Welcome to the Barn Stories podcast. I'm Lori Prins, editor of Equus Magazine. And I'm managing editor Christine Barakat. This podcast features our favorite essays and articles published in Equus over the past 40 years. Although Equus is known for articles on horse care and veterinary research, our editorial mission has always been guided by the bond that exists between horses and people. And each issue has featured a real life story that celebrates how horses enrich our lives and touch our hearts. We searched our archives, chosen the stories that resonated with our readers, and given them new life in this audio format. Longtime subscribers may recognize some of their favorite pieces. And if you're new to the Equus community, these stories will confirm that no matter what sort of saddle you sit in, a deep emotional connection to horses is something we all share. We publish quite a few true tales about rescued horses in the magazine, and for good reason. There's nothing quite as heartwarming as stories about horses and humans in need finding each other. This story, however, is more than the average rescue story, which is why we chose to feature it here. For starters, this is a rescue story set in a country where life for horses can be particularly difficult, and they rarely find their way to a leisurely retirement after their years of service. This mare's chances of finding a person willing and able to change her circumstances were incredibly slim. Of course, the mayor doesn't know that, but we do, which makes this story's ending all the more touching. The details of the story aside, I love how this essay is written. The author is talented, and her descriptions, particularly of how the mayor spends her early days on the animal sanctuary, are vivid without being overwrought. I found myself imagining just how wonderful it must have been to be that horse in that place at that time. Every rescue horse should be so lucky. Let's listen to My Golden Mare, written by Cheryl Thompson and read by Taylor Autumn. My biggest concern, returning to the sanctuary, was not the winter weather in Canada the day that I left. It was not the 10-hour flight or the logistics of international travel. No. My biggest concern was whether Canela, my golden mare, would remember me. Every Christmas as a child, I wished for a horse. And every Christmas morning, I was disappointed. But my optimism lasted for years. When I became old enough to understand that one has to fulfill one's own wishes, I started making plans for my horse. Of course, I would need a farm, but my dream would have to wait until I retired. I needed a small place I could support on my small pension, preferably in a warm climate. And so I finally found a farm in Chile where I established an animal sanctuary. I met Canela, a 12-year-old mare, in 2012 at an animal auction. She was alone in a metal enclosure looking scared, skinny, and lost. All around were the cries of animals in distress, cowering in fear. Men with no souls place money on the meat value of these animals. Terror and sadness permeated the air. And when Canela went on the auction block, I was bidding against a butcher. And because she was so malnourished, my bid was higher than the price per pound for horse meat. I took her home that night in a dilapidated truck with a large enclosed box, which held eight cows, three calves, and Canela. When we got to the farm, it was already twilight. The truck box was backed up to a high part of the land where Canela could jump off without danger. As soon as her hooves landed on the soft grass, she began to eat. The driver then took the cows and the calves on to their destinations. Over the next 12 months, I gradually got to know Canela. She had survived a hard life as a delivery horse, pulling a heavy wagon every day along cobblestone streets breathing gasoline and diesel fumes. On each of her sides was a circular mark that looked like a smiley face. Those were the burn marks from the hot metal buckles of the harness, which slowly branded her skin in the relentless sun. She had no reason to trust humans. 
Bowringer Ingelheim's equine health's focus and passion is to improve the lives of horses. It's through heart-led science that we've developed the most advanced treatments in equine health. We have pioneered advancements in equine asthma, gastric health, PPID, vaccines, joint health, parasite control, and more. For details, visit www.bi-vetmedica.com. I learned that she loved carrots and was terrified of water. She weighed over a thousand pounds, but could be frightened by a grasshopper. Her skin was very sensitive, quivering with the slightest touch. During her first 12 months at the sanctuary, she made friends with her neighbors. A hawk would sit on her back and while away the hours with her in the scented shade of a eucalyptus tree. A small, yappy white dog named Zena would try to herd her, and Canelo would pretend to be herded. The neighbor's horses met her at the fence line every dusk. For an hour every afternoon, she would stand at the edge of the forest and gaze into the pine glade where the rabbits and foxes lived. And then there was me, her human. At first, she seemed to regard me as an annoying creature, like a mosquito who bore gifts of carrots and apples. She would endure my long conversations just for the sake of whatever treat I brought. And when the treat was finished, she would walk away without a backward glance. One day, after many, many months, she didn't walk away. She stood by me quietly, thinking her hoarse thoughts, softly swishing her tail and gazing off into the distance. I was transfixed. She liked me. She really liked me. From then on, as much as she pretended otherwise, I knew better. She would return to the aloof look, barely glancing at me, and then she would eat and leave, like a very rude guest. But I knew in my heart that she liked me. And then sometimes she would bend her long, graceful head down to me and blow in my ear. A soft, whooshing sound would come out of her nose, and she would nibble at my clothes with her lips. She was talking to me as if I were another horse. She began to respond when I called her, slowly walking toward me in her own time. But she would come. Then one day, she began to run to me when I called her. Having a 1,500-pound horse galloping towards you at a high speed can be very unnerving. How could she stop at that speed? But she would screech to a halt right in front of me. Then I saw that she was just playing chicken with the human. When I last saw her in the Chilean autumn, we spent some time in the meadow, just hanging out. She was munching the grass, and I was loving the moment, and yet feeling the sadness of knowing that I had to leave the next day for six long months. How could I tell her that I was not abandoning her? I knew her life would continue to be good, and her routine would not change. A conscientious, on-site caretaker would watch over her and make sure she got her food and apples. The only difference would be the loss of one human. Would she notice? More important, would she care? I told her with words that I was leaving for a while. I imagined the plane going to the other continent, the fall and winter months going by, and then I envisioned the plane returning to this continent and the human finally arriving at this very spot beside her. She kept on eating the grasses, but I like to imagine that she understood me. I said goodbye to Canela as tears filled my eyes. So, after six long months, I approached the back meadow quietly. The golden mare was out by the farthest fence, eating grass. I whistled. She stopped eating and lifted her head wondering where the sound came from. I whistled again and called her name. She looked straight at me and bolted toward me. She was a locomotive churning powerfully across the two meadows and up the hill. She thundered straight to me and stopped on a dime, inches in front of me, her sides heaving, her nostrils flared. She put her head down to my face and smiled. She remembered. Thanks for listening to Barn Stories. We hope you enjoyed this episode. 
If you have a favorite article or essay from the Equus Archives that you'd like us to feature in a future podcast, let us know. You can reach us at Equus Barn Stories, all one word, at gmail.com. Did you enjoy this episode of Barn Stories? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave us a review. Thanks for listening. The Barn Stories podcast is a production of the Equine Podcast Network, an entity of the Equine Network.